Welcome to Talk to WCTV. My name is Karen Kirk. I'm the General Manager of Wilmington Community Television. Talk to WCTV is a live call-in program every Wednesday at 6 p.m. I invite you viewers at home to call in with your questions and comments about Access Cable Television. Wilmington Community Television is your cable station. You make it a success. You are the producers of the programming that you see on channels 30 and 52. Please call if you're interested in access cable television or programming or anything else that you see on our channels. Please call in. The number tonight is 657-4066. I'm very willing to entertain any questions about access cable television and the like. The people who are involved at Wilmington Community Television are all residents of Wilmington or work in Wilmington and decided to become involved with Access Cable Television. WCTV is the local cable studio located at the basement of the Swain School. Over the past weeks, you've seen a lot of our programming to be sure. Uh, we've had school committee, we've had selectmen meeting, we've had the church service at Wilmington United Methodist. We've had lots and lots of basketball, which is wonderful. Uh, we're very happy that we have the boys junior varsity and varsity basketball games and the girls varsity basketball games. In the future, we're also going to be airing the Wilmington Recreation Department League basketball games. So we're very happy on, at the amount of programming that is produced by our volunteers. 99.99% of the programming that you see on channels 30 and 52 are produced by our volunteers. This is the 1% that isn't produced by volunteers in front of the camera. That's produced by me. But the people who you don't see are behind the camera. The two people running camera tonight are volunteers. Paul Dion, who is our regular camera person for Talk to WCTV, and our newcomer, Linda Corbett, is over on that camera. Um, running the, di the directing board tonight uh, is, making, is uh, Mark Paolini. And he is making his directorial debut at WCTV on Talk to WCTV. Again, if you'd like to ha uh, ask any questions of me tonight, please call 657 4066 January 30th only. This will be re -cable cast on Thursday, January 31st. Talk to WCTV is an idea that I thought up to um, talk to the viewers at home about access and also to invite our board members, our board of directors, onto the show so that they can talk about what they do for WCTV and how they got involved, what they're interested in. Uh, our board members have been tirelessly working to make the studio a success and they never really got to be seen on TV or work to produce a program. This is my chance to highlight the board members. Tonight's board member is Beverly Shea, and Beverly Shea was kind enough to come on our show. Thank you very much. You're and welcome. you look lovely. Thank you. Thank you. I, I especially like your ribbon. Thank you. <laughs> now, Beverly Shea uh, has been on our board since when? Oh. Four years, five years. Mm -hmm. So you've been there since the beginning? Yes. Since the, mm -hmm. um, what is the um, task force? Were you part no, of the task force? No, I was not force? part no. of the task force. No. The town manager decided that uh, once the task force had arranged for the equipment and uh, gotten us um, support by the cable company, which was not continental greater, at that time. Uh, greater, greater Boston. Boston yeah. And uh, he decided that we needed a board of directors. And so uh, he and the selectmen decided that the way to go about this was to invite various groups in town to have a member who would be on the board or to suggest someone. And one of the groups that he went to was the local library the public library. And 
I received a letter from Phil Miriam, who is the director of mm -hmm. the public library, asking me if I would like to take the library seat. And so I thought about it, and since I'm the librarian at the high school, I thought that that would be an appropriate thing to do because my interest would be in having the students become involved in WCTV. Mm -hmm. Actually, at that time, we didn't have any call letters. We didn't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> the studio. The studio. Yeah. So, um, and we didn't have a place for the studio at that time mm -hmm. either. So um, I agreed to do it, and I received a letter from the town manager uh, saying that I had been approved. <laughs> and we met at the town hall on Glen Road, and uh, Ed Rideout was our first president, and he was a man from town who was very, very interested in cable TV and knew a lot about it, which was nice because even though I am a librarian at the high school, I am a print person, <laughs> not a media person. And as such, uh, was just getting my feet wet with any kind of technology. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a teacher at the high school, Suzette Hall, who teaches cable and who got a grant for some equipment and who has students who use the equipment and so on. But I was never involved with that in any way other than um, a spectator, shall we say. <laughs> I was once interviewed <laughs> by and now, them. And now you're secondly interviewed. Yes, yes. This is my second time to be interviewed. What would your goal be? Uh, regarding the high school students and WCTV, what would your goal be in the interaction between the two? What I would love to see is that we would have classes that are taught from the studio, that there would be a lot of kids involved after school, during the evening, but also that we would have formal classes involved in the studio, that we would use it for productions, that uh, students would become so good here that they would be able to do classes at the high school. Eventually, um, we, would, we are not wired within the building the way the West Intermediate School is. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be nice if at some time we could actually have classes broadcast within the building to every, or perhaps put on a news show. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. should, like today, for example, what better time um, when we are at war and so much is going on to have a student news show mm -hmm. that the kids would produce and everybody in the school would hear it, maybe as part of the bulletin in the morning. The bulletin would be all on TV. And as part of that, we would have a news update. Mm -hmm be local news, national news, and world news. Mm -hmm. So what we could do is we could have a, say, a half-hour talk show um, or a half-hour news program produced by high school students. The high school students could run the cameras, direct the show, be in front of the camera, and they could produce the whole show as a, a class credit. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And since we already have precedent for it because we have a class where they're receiving credit, this would be expanded to include more students. Mm -hmm. We need flexibility in the schedule, which means that we can't afford to lose an awful lot more teachers because every time you lose teachers, then you lose flexibility in the schedule, and then you're back to reading and writing and arithmetic. Mm -hmm. So that's a consideration. Yeah. You'd need the flexibility in the teacher's schedule to have um, a, a class about cable, cable television. Mm -hmm. um, it would be a luxury to have television taught to the students, but with this day and age, you know, they go off to college and other students are already 10 steps ahead of them because a lot of the students in different towns have already had this, the experience at their local cable studio. Oh, sure. Yeah. You figure um, Burlington has had a cable TV program in the schools 
I don't know how long, but I know that I went to a, a workshop with their then director, who has since retired, and it must have been 10 years ago. So they had cable TV for students, and they were taking the courses at Burlington High School then. Now, the cable studio in, Wil in Burlington is in the high school. Mm -hmm. You're right. Right, so that, that offers um, a chance for the students just to walk down the hall. But here, we're right across the street, you know, so that we're in a prime location to get the students also involved. Um, if any of the students who are watching, whether they're from Wilmington High School or any of the junior highs, or some of the elementary schools, um, if there are some students watching and have comments about how to get involved, have questions about what they can do at the cable studio, please call tonight at 657-4066. What I'm trying to do is I am um, holding workshops for the teachers so that teachers can learn from me and in turn videotape some of the things that are happening in the schools. I don't know what's really happening over at the high school, but I'm sure that there's a lot of programs that are being missed. Um, kids learning Spanish. What a wonderful way to know if you're speaking Spanish correctly than to get videotaped and then watch yourself and hear yourself if, if, if you sound sort of bilingual. Um, that is a really a good use for using cable television or some camcorders in the high school or in the other schools as well. Um, some of you, a couple of weeks ago, may have seen our Talk to WCTV show with some students from the Woburn Street School, Mrs. Arciero's class. We had four students here talking about manatees. Now, do you know what manatees are? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what manatees were. Mm -hmm. um, so we had four of the students come in and talk to me on Talk to WCTV. Um, and we talked about manatees and the, and the kids were truly interested in television. They were excited about the lights, about the cameras. Um, they were really excited and I think we can keep that excitement going with the elementary schools and the junior highs and the high school. I think and I agree with you, the high school is underutilized. Um, the resources there of the kids coming over. Um, what other ideas do you have using the kids, um, what type of programs would you like to see? Well, I definitely would like to see more coverage of different kinds of sports. And there again, it, it kind of depends on the interest of the students who are doing the programming, what we get. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, Paul Dion has been wonderful about coming over and filming sports events. But in, and his son does wonderful commentary yep. on the sports events. But wouldn't it be nice to have a student do it who knew half of the kids on the floor and could easily find out who the rest of them are? And suddenly, we would have uh, kids involved, more involved, with the sports program because as spectators they're they're making an active role they're taking an active role and not just sitting watching mm -hmm. the thing going on and i then you get kids behind the cameras you get um, kids helping produce and you get more students involved in something that they might like to do for a living someday mm -hmm. like you are mm -hmm. yep i know my school didn't have anything uh, we, there was no interaction between the cable company and the high school. So I had to wait until college and then there were 10 kids that were ahead of me because they had cable in their classrooms. Well, when I took my education courses uh, for my masters, I went to Salem State and they had a wonderful studio and it, for my AV course I went into the studio and watched students filming, producing shows, doing all those kinds of things and that was that was over ten years ago too. Mm -hmm. That was the birth, that was right at the beginning of a video. Um, let's see, ten years ago, 79, 80, 80 yeah, mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. right at the birth that was right at the birth of video. Um, colleges got equipment, 
little by little high schools got equipment and now look at us we have this whole facility here and it's waiting for high school students and as I said all the other students in Wilmington to use it um, I'm here if you'd like to make an appointment if you'd like to call me tomorrow that's Thursday if you'd like to call me and, and um, talk about some ideas that you have please do otherwise we are live tonight on talk to WCTV Wednesday night and please call at 657-4066 um, I would personally like to see um, some classes come over here for example um, history class have a history class come over here and produce a segment um, about what they're learning. I would like to see uh, English classes recite their poems on television. Uh, that would not only help with our programming, which we love to get programming, but it would also help the kids see how they say poetry because you're not supposed to say poetry going roses are red, violets, you're supposed to say it in sentence form or something. Um, I think that if if a poetry class came in, read their poems over the air, they could practice on how to recite poetry and they could also get the experience of being in front of a camera um, and being in front of an audience. Television is a different kind of audience because you're really not talking to anybody but a camera but it, it gives the students some experience. Um, some other programs that I would like to see high school students produce, um, like I was saying, foreign language. I think that foreign language would be wonderful. Um, one program that we had in my hometown was one of the teachers came over and she spoke Spanish very, very simplistically. Well, we were having a Spanish exchange with a, a girl coming over, and my mother tuned in every night and learned Spanish off the cable channel because one of the teachers taught it over the air. Sure, yeah. that's marvelous. Yeah. And you know, while you were talking, I was thinking that students are really much easier with the medium than older people like me, and me. because they've grown up with it. Mm -hmm. We had a, an experience, oh, it must have been 15 years ago. It was called GSA Guided Self-Analysis. And it oh, was <laughs> to teach teachers how to teach better. And it involved a uh, coordinator who came in and talked to us about uh, proper teaching technique and the fact that you asked questions on a simplistic level like fact questions and then you asked for thought questions. <laughs> and the idea was, of course, that you were supposed to work the class up from your basic fact questions up to your lofty and abstract questions. And you were also supposed not to shut out any part of the class. And so part of this whole thing was eventually that you taught on camera. And they taught us how to take the camera into the classroom and set it up in the corner of the room and focus it so that we would be within the range of the camera. And then we would tape ourselves. Well, all of us were really gung-ho and enthusiastic about this until it came time to actually sign out that camera and actually do it. Now, no one was going to see us do this but the class that we were teaching. Mm -hmm. And we, it was into the spring. We were very comfortable with our classes. And in my own case, I had probably been teaching for 10 years at that point. And yet, I remember that I was so scared to do that. And I kept watching the camera. And it was like, I learned more from watching that tape when I finally confronted it. It took me a long time. I kept thinking, oh, my neck is skinny. And my, I'm old. And I talk with my hands. <laughs> And it was the kids used to, to tell me that I couldn't talk if I had my hands tied down. <laughs> and that was a wonderful experience because I found out that they were right. I found out the kinds of expressions that I repeat and those little kinds of housekeeping things. But I also found out that I was going with the brighter students in the class, that it trained me in my questioning techniques 
to draw forth the answers from the kids instead of giving them the answers. Mm -hmm. Teachers are great at losing patience and giving the kids the answers. <laughs> and I bring all of that up because I'm thinking that we could do that too. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be a very difficult thing to do at all. And I think it would be a fun thing to do and I think it would be a profitable thing to do. One thing that my brother, who's a teacher, so he might have, be a little slanted about this, he always wanted one of my members, any one of my members, to produce a teacher of the month. And be, because he's a teacher, he probably wants to be on television. But he always wanted to have a teacher of the month to highlight the teachers, um, videotape some of the teachers in the classroom, videotape the teacher as the teacher walks through his or her day, uh, videotape some of the kids responses to the teacher, oh she's great, she's wonderful, he's great, uh, and have a teacher of the month saluting one of the teachers in the Wilmington school systems per month. It would be wonderful. Yeah. Paul Fleming, our principal, whom you have met I mm -hmm. think, yes. is wanted to start that as program. And as usual, we as teachers were reluctant <laughs> to I don't know, I think it was partly having uh, one of our numbers singled out and it was the mechanics, you always get hung up in the mechanics. <laughs> how would we go about this and so on. But I think it's, it's a, a thing we can do. Mm -hmm. And I think a one way to do it is if the kids were to produce it, there would be no problem with that. Mm -hmm. The kids would decide, oh, yeah, Mr. Greco, he's really funny. And we should really get him teaching a vocabulary lesson. Or we should get Mr. Joyce uh, reading poetry or reciting, because he has it all stored up here, you know, <laughs> and the quality of mercy and all that, and he just spouts it forth. And they would have a good time with that. Mm -hmm. We had a student, I had a student in the back room of the library with a camcorder the other day. She asked me if she could come in and set up an interview show very much like this. Oh, okay. And so all these people paraded through the library into the back room and uh, she interviewed students, she interviewed Mr. Fleming, she interviewed some other teachers and I still am not sure what her subject was but it was a subject of interest to the school community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some rule, it might have been about smoking right, in a girl's be, room, yeah. or, you know, yeah, one of those be. big issues. Could be, yeah. But I think it's a vehicle that certainly there's a place for, mm -hmm. a big place. Mm -hmm. um, I know Suzette Hall is the media teacher at Wilmington uh, High School and she and I have met to discuss getting the kids involved at the school. Uh, she teaches a course and She's going to teach the course 50% or 60% in the classroom and then come over here for the other 40%. So you can do a lot of book knowledge, but to actually put your hands on a video camera, um, set up lighting, set up microphones, it's a big deal for a student. And uh, we're hoping to get Suzette Hall active. Uh, I know that it was in the it was in the working stages before I got here, but we're really hoping to go with it this semester. Mm, I think that will be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now, she's had an operation on her foot, oh, no. and she's walking around with a thing on her foot about this big. But I has the guess that she'll come over anyway. I hope so. I <laughs> with hope her so. crutches and the whole thing. <laughs> I don't know if she'll be running camera with that foot, but um, hopefully she'll get some of the kids involved. She said there's a few who are just shining stars already. Um, yes, that she has mm -hmm. her eye on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, too, that we have a lot of uh, things in the arts, music programs, that uh, we did the Christmas concert, mm -hmm. didn't we do the Christmas concert? And um, I'm going to rehearsal tonight for a fundraiser that we're going to do in March. I think it's right after St. Patrick's Day, because I that? know we're doing, um, we're doing some Irish songs for St. Patrick's Day. And uh, as you may know, have you ever seen the Wilmington High School Auditorium? It, it's a black hole. Yes, <laughs> very good, very good, exactly. So Ms. Khalil, who is the director of the Fine and Performing Arts Program for the Wilmington Public Schools, 
has decided that she can't wait any longer for people to raise money, and especially in this fiscal crisis that we are in, uh, she realizes that the money may not be forthcoming. So she has launched one of her typical fundraising campaigns. She um, has put on two musicals in past years to raise money for the scholarship fund. But this is the first thing she's ever done that's this spectacular. And it's going to be a whole week of performances. And uh, I'm in the, uh, what do we call the alumni chorus. Oh, well, that, that's different. And that's made up <laughs> of uh, teachers, staff. I was involved in Push Cuts, which was uh, the last musical that she and Dom DeGrazia, who used to be here in the music department, that they did. And so I'm an alumnus of that, alumna of that. And um, we have all kinds of students who are alumni who are in the chorus. We have an alumni band. And uh, former students from the high school have gone through all of the yearbooks. Oh, we have, we have a, a call. call. This is your first call. <laughs> OK. Hello, caller. You're live on Talk to WCTV. Do you have a question? Hello, caller. No, I guess your caller got shy. Aww. Oh, did you tell your son to call? <laughs> no, but I should have. <laughs> please, what's, what's his name? John. John, please call. Call mummy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a question, John, about access cable television? You know the number. It's Wednesday night, January 30th. Please call 657-4066. We're in our last remaining minutes here. Um, our director of, of Days Gone By, Mark Blair, just got a job, so I'd like to congratulate Mark. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so that's why he's not here tonight. And he was scheduled to be our guest next week, so I don't know if we'll have a guest next week. For those of you who are constant viewers of Talk to WCTV, uh, you may remember last week when I spoke for 30 minutes for uh, just straight. Uh, Next week may be another one of those stints. So I make a, an appeal to the board members who haven't been on Talk to WCTV yet. If any board member would like to be on Talk to WCTV again, please feel free to give me a call. Hello, you're live on Talk to WCTV. Do you have a question? Um, yes, hi, Karen. Hi. I'd just like to know if there's going to be uh, a, maybe a live broadcasting program in the high school. If Mrs. Shea would be running something like that, or if oh. at all possible. Okay, I think we are hooked up in the auditorium. Are there any other places in the high school? The library. The library. Um, we have cable connections in some of the classrooms, so we probably could broadcast out of those, too. Mm -hmm. Continental Cable, I have to give them a plug because they have been simply super. They have. They have uh, given us cable uh, drops. I'm not supposed to call them drops. They're something else. Connections. I call them drops. In uh, <laughs> several of the classrooms so that we can have a TV and a VCR in the classroom and have access to cable TV in those classrooms. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether we can, do you know whether we can uh, broadcast live out of those? I would have to speak to Continental, but um, if we speak with Continental and, and set up maybe one of the larger classrooms, we could go live from one of those classrooms. Um, do you have an idea of a show from one of the classrooms, caller? Um, probably maybe something that has to do with like a, a news broadcast or so forth, mm -hmm. something like that to... Uh, you know, school news, yeah. to that effect. Yeah, it'll probably be in the, in the media department. Yeah. Right. Okay, thanks for your call. Thank you. Okay, we're going to wrap up tonight's show. Uh, join us next week when we're not sure who our guest will be. Oh, one quick call. Hello, you're live on Talk to WCTV. Just wanted to say probably people haven't called because it's been such a very interesting half hour. I think it's the best one that you've had since you've gone live. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, we're going to wrap up tonight's show. And um, tonight's show, as always, is sponsored in part by AAA Cartel Cleaning Company. Thank you, Bev Shea. You're and thank you, viewers, for your interest. Thank you and good night. Join us next week, next Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Talk to WCTV. For Karen Kirk and the rest of the WCTV team, thank you and good night.